presentation, I'll be showing you how to use scatter graphs to show the cross-sectional area of a river. Sometimes, when collecting data on a river, you might be at six locations that are spread quite far along the course of the river. So, for example, I've got three sites in the upper course, further down I've got two sites here, site four and five in the middle course, and site six in the lower course. And what you want to do is sometimes actually uh, combine the cross-section, show the cross-sectional areas on three graphs I actually show, to A, to compare the characteristics of these sites at each course of the river, and to clearly show how these changes, how the characteristics of the river change with distance downstream. And that's why we can use the scatter graph function to do this. On this graph here, you can see that I have shown, I have drawn sites one, two, and three on the same graph. Now, a few little things before I show you how to do this. You must remember that no matter how many graphs you do, they must all have the same y-axis and the same axis. Follow my instructions, pause, rewind, have a go. So to start with, I'm going to be drawing the scatter graph for sites 4 and 5. So I'm going to start with site 4, highlight all the data, insert, scatter graph, and we're going to choose the scatter graph that's got the line. I want you to click on the line, right click, format data series, click on the little pink box, scroll down to the bottom, click on the smooth line, and you have this nice smooth line appear. Now I want to change the colour, so we haven't got the same colour as the first the three sites, and that's very simple. Choose the line, let's change that to a nice red. So the line is now red, so once you to fill the shapes, it's the marker. Again, I want there to be no border, which makes life a bit easier. And the fill, I want it to be red as well. Right, but as you can see, this graph is slightly different to the one I drew earlier. So we need to do a few little things. Like I said, the x and y axes need to be the same. So if we start with the x axis, click, so you can see the little circles appear on here, and click over to the graph axis options. I want to change the maximum to 17. I want to, and you see the minimum changes, I want to change that back to naught. And the major and minor has changed. Right, so have four. I want the major to be one and the minor to be two. Now it doesn't matter that it's bunched together and you spread it out to make it the same dimensions as the previous graph. These will change and these will be spaced out quite nicely. Now I want to make the turn the y axis upside down. I'm going to put the values in reverse order. And as you can see, this is now I'm going to put the values in reverse order. And again, I want to change the maximum. I want the maximum to go up to 0 0.5. And then you does it for you there. Now I'm going to show you how to add the data for site 5. First of all, move the graph a bit further down so you can see all the data. Click on the graph area, right click, select data, and you can see this has now appeared. This is the data for site 4, so if we just click on that, click edit, site name, series name, sorry, site 4. Now I want to add some data, so just add, type in, so I'm going to draw the line for site 5. Then we have the x axis. So click this side, hold down shift, click at the end. That's the y data, that's the depth. Again, click here, hold down the shift button, and click here. Press OK. And again, the line has been drawn for site 5. And it's orange. I won't show you how to change it to a smooth line or how to change the colour. Just rewind the video and watch it again. And now, again, it's still a little bit different. We want to move the x-axis to the bottom. So click on the x-axis again. Uh, graph, labels, label. Now I'm going to show you how to add the y-axis, x-axis, and the title. So click on the graph, design, add chart elements, and let's start with the nice chart title. So we have that above the graph. So a graph to show the cross-sectional area of the Rivera at sites 4 and 5. 
always a good idea to check the spelling. Also want to make it a little bit smaller so it fits on. Let's try and keep it the same size as what's before, that's size 11, size 11, size 11, perfect. We can obviously resize so it will fit. Now we want to put the X and Y axis label. So again, design, add chart element, axis title, primary vertical, depth of the river in meters. Add chart element, axis title, primary horizontal, distance from the left and bank of the river in meters. Again, you can see that appears at the bottom at the top, so we just want to move that. But first one I'm showing how to do the key as legends at the bottom. Legend appears at the bottom. Now we just need to make this a little bit same size, just makes a bit more space. Click down there, move the x axis along, scroll up, move that size down a little bit. Okay, just playing around the settings so it does look nice and even. And now it might be a good idea to put the cross sectional area on. So again, you've got your data, you might want to calculate it. So you already have it in a table, well done. And just add it to your graph. Insert, design, sorry, insert, shapes, text box. Put the text box there. Now if you want to group it, again, always a good idea, type first. So site for cross-sectional area. Here's you've got some nice data that appears, quite, quite nice to format it, and then you should be able to group the data. So I did that by holding down control. And sometimes, depending on your Excel, it might actually group automatically for you, especially if you draw the text box on there. Change the color so it's nice and even, and it stands out very clearly. And that is how you use scatter graphs to show the cross section of the area of the river at more than one or two sides. Of course, in the next video, I'll show you how to interpret these graphs.